some schools today, especially for younger children, actually do try to encourage a little bit of a growth mindset. So when you're in elementary school, when you're in preschool, kindergarten, when you're very young, uh, I think we do a much better job of encouraging and trying to foster a growth mindset. But then later on in school, when you start to get to high school, when you start to get to college and then move towards organizations, all of a sudden this idea of this fixed mindset starts to creep into our lives and the whole concept of growth mindset gets pushed down. And then when you get to your organization, this growth mindset concept is just completely thrown out the window altogether. Now, similarly, uh, the way that you can identify if you have a growth or a fixed mindset, you can also identify if your manager has a growth or a fixed mindset. And here are a couple of things that you can look out for. Leaders who have a fixed mindset place a very high priority on looking smart, and they believe that people can't change. So if you work for a manager or for a leader who doesn't believe in this concept of embracing vulnerability, who doesn't believe of admitting that they don't know something or that they need help, who always wants to make sure that everybody that raises their hands in a meeting only has the right answers, if you work for that kind of a person, chances are that that particular manager or leader has a fixed mindset. On the other hand, if you work for a manager or a leader who believes in getting feedback, who is okay with admitting that they don't know how to do something, who believes and encourages learning and experimenting and curiosity and doing new things and is okay with failure, chances are that that particular manager or leader has a growth mindset. So take a minute really quick and think about some of the interactions that you've had with your managers or even with your peers and try to figure out who do you work with that you think has a growth mindset versus who do you work with or even report to that you think has a growth mindset. Perhaps one of the best examples of an organization that absolutely fostered and encouraged uh, this idea of a fixed mindset is Enron. Now, of course, we're all familiar with Enron and ultimately what happened to the company and they are a classic, classic example of what happens to an organization that purely believes and encourages this concept of a fixed mindset. Enron had such a talent-obsessed culture. They were so focused on being smart and on being right that they were willing to do whatever it took to make sure that the outcome appeared to be positive. Now, I say appeared to be positive because as we all know what happened inside of Enron, people were lying nonstop, right? They lied so much that again, it led to the company's ultimate demise. And that's what happens when you are obsessed with the outcome, when you are obsessed with a fixed mindset, with purely being right and smart and correct. You get so obsessed with the outcome that you're willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that that outcome is positive. Now, what they could have done instead is to admit the mistakes, admit that they didn't know how to do something, and then try to correct those mistakes. But again, that's not what they did. They just kept digging themselves deeper and deeper into a big hole. The culture at Enron wasn't one where it was okay to admit failure, to admit defeat, to admit that you needed help with something. Nobody inside of the organization was allowed to do that. So imagine for a minute you show up to work, and by the way, you might even work at this kind of an organization, but if not, imagine what it would be like to show up to work every day in front of your peers, in front of your managers, every meeting that you go to, you're constantly under pressure where every word that comes out of your mouth has to be correct. Every word that comes out of your mouth has to make you feel smart. I mean, that's a horrible kind of an environment. That's a horrible kind of culture to be in. You're never allowed to admit that you can't do something. You're never allowed to ask for help. Man, I mean, that sounds like a terrible place to work. And not only that, a very high stress environment. But again, that's exactly the kind of corporate culture that Enron created. If Enron instead had a growth mindset, they would be okay with admitting failure. They would be okay with people in meetings raising their hands and saying, actually, you know, I really don't know uh, the answer to that, or uh, I'm not sure. Can, can somebody help me with that? Or can I get back to you guys on that? Right? That is ultimately what happens inside of a growth mindset. And today, of course, there are many companies that foster that kind of a growth mindset. I think Amazon is a fantastic organization that has a growth mindset. Think about what happened when Amazon launched their phone. 
which turned out to be a huge failure. They lost millions of dollars across the company. And other organizations like Amazon have gone through similar sorts of things. I shared quotes from people like Steve Jobs and Warren Buffett where they constantly say that success isn't just about the things that you say yes to, it's also about the things that you say no to. And so in the case of Amazon, they had a huge failure with their Amazon phone. But guess what happened? They learned from their mistakes, they moved on, they didn't try to lie about the numbers, they didn't try to cheat the data and make it sound like their phone was super successful and everybody was buying it and it was super profitable. No, they killed it. They said, we made a mistake. The phone didn't do well. We get it. We're on to the next thing. That's the difference between a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Athena and I hope you enjoyed that. If you want more content like that, check out futureofworkpodcast.com. And do me a favor, please review the podcast on Apple Podcasts or whatever your preferred channel is. Thank you very much.